Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chen Chen, and on this channel, we talk about creating photorealistic 3D assets. I'm recording this right after Christmas, and I hope you guys had a great holiday and ate a lot of good food and、uh, have some time to relax. I have something a little bit different for you guys this time again. So I finally started learning Unreal Engine, and I always really wanted to learn how to do a nice presentation for a real-time asset inside of the engine. Here is my first attempt, and I want to show you、uh, the process I did. I wouldn't even call this a tutorial anymore because I'm learning at the same time. And I'm sure a lot of you out there can give me some tips on how to make this process even better. So this is the asset I'm going to be using for this tutorial. I'm going to try to create a small environment for it, and、uh, I also created a ZBrush tutorial for this asset and also a texturing tutorial for it. So I will link them in the description if you're interested. The material for the asset currently is this rock smart material that I created for a different statue.、Uh, I just threw it on there. I didn't do any adjustments, and it looks pretty good. But the environment I'm aiming to create is. In bit of a dark、uh, lighting situation, so I'm thinking I might need to make this material a little bit brighter, so it's not、uh, we will not lost it in the shadows. Also, inside of this tutorial, I'm going to be relying on Mega Scan 3D assets heavily for my environment.、Um, I didn't plan to actually model and texture them; that would take way too long. And I have never tested、uh, Mega Scan inside of Unreal Engine before, so I thought this would be a good opportunity. Just gonna try to use what I have to put a small environment together, and then put my statue inside, and then gonna do some simple lighting and、uh, just try to get a good image out. What I'm looking at right now is Quixel Bridge, which is basically a library for all their 2D textures and also 3D assets. And also, they have this plugin you can、uh, connect with Maya and Unreal Engine, where you can export any kind of material and 3D assets directly into another software. I have set up my plugin for MegaScan with Maya. Um, the reason why I'm gonna do this in Maya first is I kind of want to test out if my idea even works before I go into Unreal Engine. For right now, I know nothing about the engine, so it will be kind of slow to just test out the idea. I'm just gonna export everything into Maya first and、um, see if my idea even works, and then I'm gonna export everything into Unreal Engine. So in the export setting, you have to select specifically for Maya, and then after you download the asset, you can just press export, and then you will see your asset pop up in Maya, and you can actually see the texture together with everything. is extremely convenient. So I'm just going to、um, speed up this process. I'm going to download a bunch of asset that I think will work for my idea, and I'm just gonna lay them out inside of Maya. Here is what I have so far, and I also imported my own asset. Try to place it. According to my reference, with this reference,、um, I don't have some kind of like church wall or any sort of a church interior available. So I'm just using kind of like a Victorian wall, Victorian interior environment.、Uh, I'm just gonna follow、um, the lighting that I can get from the reference. I do find this、uh, already made candle holder and candles inside of Mega Scan, so that was super convenient. I'm also gonna download some roof pieces, and I think that's pretty much everything I need for this environment. After all the pieces、uh, imported and placed, I'm going to start to look at if、uh, my shot works. So that's the temporary shot camera that I created, that I try to mimic the reference as much as possible. So now I need to do something about this texture. I'm keeping all the layers that I already have in my smart material. I'm just gonna bring everything a little bit brighter, and this is the reference I chose to follow to have some kind of brighter stoned material. So this is what I have in the end, and I thought this could work. I would not know until I actually start to light object inside of the engine, but I can always come back and change it. Finally, we're in the engine now. So I created a, basically a blank scene inside the engine with almost nothing in it.、Uh, there is some simple lighting in it, which I will have to change later. So you see the big green button on the top. So I already set up my connection with MegaScan. The idea is the same. I just inside of my Quixel Bridge, I have to change the export setting to Unreal Engine. So then when you press export, it's gonna go into the engine instead of anything else. 
I didn't really explain how to set up the plugin, but it's extremely simple. Just download Quixel Bridge, and when you try to install the plugin, we'll give you all the instructions. And also, there's tons of YouTube tutorial on YouTube already for that. Also, when you are using Megascan for Unreal Engine, everything is absolutely free. You just need to sign in into Quixel Bridge with your Epic game uh, username and password. My plugin is already set up, so I'm just going to focus on recreating my scene inside of Maya in Unreal Engine. The basic control inside the engine is very similar to Maya so far, I think, so that wasn't a big issue. So here's the scene I have so far. I felt like this is pretty similar to what I have in Maya. And also, um, right now, we're looking at is a lit version of uh, the environment. You can also go to unlit, which you can see everything a little bit more clearly. I don't have any lights going on right now. That's why everything looks so dark. And now we're going to talk about how to export our asset for Unreal Engine. For the OBJ, I already have this version of OBJ saved somewhere. So for the texture, we're going to go to the normal place, uh, export textures. We are going to output templates and we're going to choose Unreal 4 Packed. After that, we're going to settings. We're going to save this somewhere that we can find later. And we're going to set the file uh, format to target. And then we can just export. These are the three files we exported. Uh, one is base color, one is normal map, and one is a packed uh, RGB map, which actually represent three different kinds of material maps. To bring them into Unreal Engine, you can basically just drag them into the content browser. Now I'm going to find my OBJ and I'm going to drag that one into my content browser as well. And this window will pop up, and normally I don't adjust anything. I'm gonna put the statue in the right place that I planned before. Now I'm gonna have to learn how to assign these maps to the material I have. Um, I think there's already a basic material going on, so if you just go to detail section and click into the material, before I connect the map, I'm going to my RGB map and I'm going to uncheck sRGB because I think this is supposed to be a black and white map. And now if I click into the basic shader that I already have assigned for this object, uh, the shader view will pop up. Now I just need to drag those three maps into my shader view as well and uh, connect them to the shader. Two of them are very obvious. Uh, the base color goes into base color and the normal map goes into the normal map area. So for the stacked texture which has the RGB color information in it, the red channel is for ambient occlusion, the green channel is for roughness, and the blue channel is for metalness. Once all those maps are connected, I should be able to see all the same material that I see in Substance Painter. It's just that now the lighting in my scene is really bad and also um, I start to doubt uh, this texture as well. I want it to be a little bit brighter because I don't want, uh, because the background walls are pretty dark, I don't want it to kind of merge with the wall and we can't see it anymore, but I think it's a little bit too bright. I'm considering reverting it back to, into its original stone material. I think that one, even though it looks kind of dark, it might work better. After I export the new texture, I'm just going to drag it into the same area that I saved the previous texture and actually everything just updated on its own because the name is exactly the same. I think once I add lights to it, uh, this level of uh, material will look much better than the really bright one. Starting with lights, I have some candle in front of the statue. I'm just going to use some point lights for that. And the uh, lights are um, fairly straightforward. I feel like it's a little bit similar to V-Ray or Arno lights, where besides choosing the color of the light, you can also choose the temperature of the light. 
So for me, um, I just changed the value of the temperature of the light to like war warmer tone, that it will match what a candle will look like. And also to duplicate something in Unreal, you can just press down Alt and drag. I don't have any fire created for the candle. Uh, I don't know how to use any effects yet within Unreal, so that could be something I would look into next. Following my reference, the next light I see that lit most of the scene is this very strong warm light that has a very strong direction to it that create a very strong shadow uh, behind the statue. Um, for me, the candle light is definitely not the one that's doing it. Feels like maybe there's a big fire. Maybe there's a very big fireplace that we don't see in the shot. So I'm setting up a very strong spotlight. I'm also going to set the light value to something very warm. And the last light I want to add is the light coming outside of the window. Um, from the reference, I cannot tell if it's night or day. It looks a little bit more like daytime, but uh, my scene, I think I will make it nighttime and I will let some maybe moonlight coming from the window and I will give it a very cool value. In that case, we'll have a nice mixture of warm light and cool light and warm shadow and cool shadow that are on different side of this statue. The next thing I have to figure out how to do is to render out some frames uh, from on your engine. And for that, we have to open Sequencer. So when you choose under Cinematics, Sequencer, uh, first it's gonna ask you where you're gonna save everything else. So I'm just gonna give it a um, simple name. And if I just click camera, it will just create a new camera for me. And if the little camera icon is on, that means uh, what I see in my viewport is through the camera. Select a sequence. You can also set keyframes and then move the camera and set another keyframe to have some simple uh, camera movement. Uh, for my scene, I don't really need that. I just need a couple frames, but it's nice to know how to do that. Since setting up a camera shot is so easy here and I see everything real time, I know what the end result looks like. Uh, it could be kind of fun to actually render out a sequence. Under camera, there's a lot of things you can do. You can try to create some depth of field. Um, you can actually manually control uh, where you want to focus using the eyedrop icon. I cannot go too in-depth with it because this is basically the first time I'm trying to use it as well. I just don't have a lot of experience. but. Uh, as I know how to do everything here better, I will try to explain better as well. I actually ended up not liking my original lighting reference too much for my own scene. Uh, it just looked super flat. That giant directional light kind of just like make my statue look quite flat. So I changed my strategy a bit and moved the warm light to the right side and also enhanced uh, the moonlight from the outside. And also I added some volumetric fog. It's kind of a very easy way to just make the scene look much better. So. At this point, I'm ready to render out some frames. Go to Cinematics and choose Movie Render Queue. Uh, under the blue render icon, you have to choose the sequence you want to render out. After that, go to Settings, and this is where you will add all the different settings you want to have for your render. My setting is pretty simple. I basically just chose what kind of file format I want. Um, and also I added an anti-aliasing setting to everything. And after that, you can just go to output and choose um, where you want to save everything, uh, how, what's the aspect ratio of the frame. And also I chose custom uh, frame rendering, which I'm only gonna tell it to render two frames out. And you can also to choose to render locally or on a farm. So for me, obviously it's gonna be on my computer and this is the frame I rendered out and I give it a little bit of a color correction on top of that in Photoshop. That is the end of this process and uh, I had a lot of fun learning a bunch of new things. I wanted to get into Unreal for a long time so finally had some time to actually watch tutorials and learn some basic things about it. I think in the future I want to go back to more asset creation videos but at the same time I'm, I'm gonna use a lot more real-time uh, presentation inside of Unreal just to get myself more familiar with the software. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's not necessarily a tutorial. It's more just uh, my own documentation of uh, me learning new things. I hope you have fun watching that. 
And if you liked it, like the video and subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys had a great holiday, and I will see you in the next one.